The Rogue Invitational 2023 is over and we're here to bring you our highs and lows from this year's competition. So firstly, apologies for being a little bit late bringing this video out to you. Auntie Liz hasn't been feeling too well. You've had a bad throat, haven't you? I lost my voice completely. It's back now. But even yesterday... It I still was... sounds a little off. Uh, yeah, I am a little <laughs> off. But I, it's well enough. It's fine now. <laughs> but we're, we're back home. And obviously, the Rogue Invitational just happened. Huge competition. It's one of the biggest of the year. There were some brilliant highs. There were some lows as well. And we're here to talk about all of those. So stay tuned and make sure you watch till the end of the video. So this year, there was a number of challenges for the team at the Rogue Invitational, starting off on the Thursday, which essentially is the rehearsal day for the production team, for people like myself that are doing the commentating, the presenters. We're, we're all there kind of, you know, going through processes, making sure everything's working well. And there is a absolute monsoon pouring it down in Texas. We go to Texas to get a tan, oh, no. and that was just not happening this year. The weather was a huge challenge all weekend for the whole team. Mm. The last two years have been to Austin, Texas. The, the weather's just glorious, it's sunshine. Last year it did rain, but it only rained. So they had to delay the first day by about two hours, but we were able to overrun by that much and then catch up. But this time it just wasn't stopping. It. it was stop, start, stop, start, it was wasn't just it? It was just every day. Rain. So that was something. the first big challenge for the team was to cope with the weather. Not easy when you're running an outdoor event. So day one starts with the Tower of Power, a 900 pound, 18 inch deadlift. I believe last year it was actually a fraction so higher. higher yeah. So this year they kind of lowered it an inch. So the weight remained the same. There was a little bit of confusion in terms of weight. So I wasn't quite hundred percent sure on the commentary. However, the deadlift was an inch lower than the year before. And I think that's why the reps were slightly lower than maybe we saw. And they weren't allowed power briefs either. Yes, were they? another point this yeah. year, there was no briefs allowed. It was, uh, no suits, no briefs, they were allowed straps. So just making things a little bit harder for the athletes. And this event started really well for Bobby Thompson and Trey Mitchell. Mm. Both took joint first, getting eight repetitions on this one. Mitch Hooper with an impressive seven and Alexei Novikov taking third place with six repetitions. It was good to see Alexei putting in a decent performance because he's not been in the best shape. I did have a chat with Alexei the night before the competition and his goal right now is to be in shape for the Arnolds. He's yeah. really been struggled with, struggling with a few personal issues. He's also had the elbow surgery and he's just not quite back to his best yet. Yeah. But we did see slight improvements at this show from what we'd seen at the Giants Live in Cardiff. So hopefully he can go and have some time away from competition now and get himself back to his best. Mm. Because he's the only athlete that's ever been to all three Rogue Invitationals. Yeah, he he's achieved so much in his career and he was actually still the youngest Youngest athlete competing this weekend in the strongman, which oh, is quite crazy really, to think yeah. about that. So, you know, it's easy to say, oh, Alexi's finished. Yeah. He's really not. He just needs to get himself in a good mental place, get himself fully fit, and I think we'll see him back contending the big competitions next year. Yeah. A bit of a shame for Mateusz on this one, obviously. Deadlift has always been his nemesis, really, hasn't it? At this level, like, Mateusz is not a bad deadlifter by almost anyone's standards until you put him against the very best guys in the world and zero reps for Mateusz here. Yeah, and there was a little bit of confusion with that as well, kind of looking online. Oh yeah, but um, the points, yeah. Even some athletes that were watching back home were kind of getting quite upset about the, the scoring system. <laughs> no, no names. <laughs> <laughs> a little friend of ours yeah. maybe getting a bit upset. But uh, at the rules meeting the day before the competition, the rules clearly stated that if you zero an event, you will get zero points. So it was a little bit of a um, miscommunication with the production side mm. that put up a point and a half for any of the guys that zeroed, which was Maxime yeah. and Kilishkovsky. The controversy came the following day when those points were removed, wasn't it? Yes. But they were never... The athletes knew yeah. the score right from the start. Yeah. It was just a production issue. Yeah. Unfortunate, but it's making sure these things are communicated properly so next time there is no issues with that it has always been an interesting point of conversation like that scoring because that's how they used to do it in road competitions like with the arnold's etc well it's not necessarily road competitions no, it was the arnold's it used was to the, do. Arnold, the arnold's yeah. had some weird scoring systems to be honest in the past and this is one of my issues for a completely different video in that we need continuity and rules within strongman because as it stands 
every competition can have slightly different rules. Yeah. And if the athletes don't listen to those rules in the meetings, it causes problems. And it also causes confusion for us as fans watching. Yeah. So it's why I kind of bang on about we need some rules like established for strongman to really minimize those kind of confusing times yeah i guess so but yeah um they always used to for zero reps on something like a deadlift for reps they would still add up those bottom place points and divide it by however many athletes so in this case like last place would have been worth one point um ninth place would have been worth two points so that's three points divided by two people who zeroed this which was maxime and mateus one and a half points each so it is a bit confusing, isn't it? Very confusing. Maybe it's just me. So I think the real surprise on the deadlift, especially considering he was so good at the Shaw Classic with the higher pull, was Tom Stoltman. He did, however, compete the week before. The travel over yeah. maybe took a little bit out of him. He only managed to get four repetitions. I was expecting a few more from Tom on this one. He did improve dramatically as the competition went on. Yeah, you sometimes did. see this with Tom in competition where he starts a little bit slow. The big difference now between Tom and a few years ago is when he starts slow, he doesn't give up anymore. Yeah, and we saw that at the Shaw Classic also we've with seen the log. It, we've yeah. seen it a number of times yeah. now. And he, he, I think he's really maturing as an athlete mm. and not letting these one-off bad events get to him. So we moved on to event number two, which was the bull pull. Now, essentially, this is a... It's kind of like a truck pull with a sled, a giant sled. They had a bull on the back of it. It looked amazing. You know, it's one of those events that I think on paper sounded like a great idea. And I think it still could be a great idea. I've got some ideas that I'm going to share with you guys in a minute to, that I think could work. But unfortunately, watching it, it just didn't work. The humidity, but basically it was, it was a wooden frame on metal runners. Yeah. The humidity in the arena or in Austin in general was extremely high. Uh, the friction that it was causing was causing problems. And the way that it was attached to the frame, it had two pivot points either side. And as the athletes pulled, you sometimes saw it twisting a little bit and kind of digging into the side of the, the frame that it was pulling along the tracks. Yeah, so I quizzed Kevin Ferris and Brian Shaw at they, length about this because they were both the guys testing it, yeah. weren't they? And um, yeah, they both said like where it's attached on two sides with each sort of forward footward motion, it almost sort of moves like this, if you like. It wasn't like a smooth pull as if it was maybe being pulled in the middle. Yeah. Um, so some small modifications maybe could make it a really good event. It, they could. I mean, Kieliszkowski started. Now, let's just remember, yeah. Kieliszkowski is a fantastic truck puller. One of the best in the world. And he was the only athlete to finish the whole truck. Mitch Hooper was the only athlete that went later on that actually improved on performances. It seemed to get harder and harder for everyone as they went through, other than Mitch, who managed to keep it going. And he used a slightly different technique as if he was doing like an, an initial pull on a truck every single pull. Yeah. So his chest was high, but he was driving the hips down, just mm. trying to shunt it along. I noticed a he kept bit. high and sort of almost more vertical. Cool. And I think that's, you know, I've seen Mitch get a lot of criticism for this competition, but yeah. you have to admire his ability to adapt in the situation. That shows what a great athlete he is. And just from a coaching point of view, to see athletes do that is quite impressive because a lot of people kind of just think, oh, it's not moving. When an athlete can suddenly adapt and figure something out, you've mm. got to kind of sit there and give them respect for that. We all want it to move better. We all want it to kind of be a fair event that everyone kind of gets the same movement for. And I think... Next year, if they do it again with some modifications, it could be very good. Unfortunately, there was just a few things that went far too wrong. And the biggest disappointment on this one was Trey Mitchell. Yeah. Trey Mitchell, when I was in the commentary booth, I thought he'd had some kind of like a seizure or something. Oh. The way he went down, I was really genuinely worried. Luckily, nothing like that. However, it was his Achilles. Was his Achilles and I think it was a friend of ours showed us the, a side video of it. It was Stephen and, who was stood next to yeah, me. Yeah, was... and you could just see the ankle, or the, the Achilles go. It was nasty. Uh, he has already had surgery, um, which is great. He will be back. He's an amazing athlete. He was, it's such a shame because he said he trained so hard for this competition. He was in great shape. We wish Trey the best of luck with his recovery. I know what an, a, a torn Achilles is like. It's not a recovery that's going to be super fast, no. but he will be back. He's an absolute beast and we wish him the best. So just running through the top five very quickly. Kieliszkowski taking the win on this one. Maximum 10 points. Very, very important for him after that deadlift. Yeah. Mitch Hooper taking second place. Evan Singleton. His technique, again, didn't look amazing, but the 
effort that he oh, put in yeah. really impressed me. He just kept fighting hard till the end. It, it was tough. You know, there's things going wrong, but again, admire the man's effort and tenacity to just keep pushing to the absolute limit. Luke Stoltman with his best performance of the competition and Maxime Boudreau picking up some important points as well mm. on this one. So after this, we were supposed to then have the log medley, which included the two fingers, fingers and the three reps with, it's 163 kilos, I 162. believe. 162, okay. 360 pounds. Yeah, so it was all laid out outside, set up. Um, the rain came again and we were told it would be delayed and pushed back a little bit. But then the rain, it just didn't stop, did it? So we were told that finally that it would be pushed into tomorrow and we didn't know what that was going to look like in terms of fitting the extra event in because we have to remember, this is a CrossFit event, the Rogue Invitational, yeah. with the Strongman events kind of filling those gaps in between. There's more CrossFitters there than there are Strongmen. There's more events in CrossFit than oh, there are in Strongmen. So we weren't sure what that was going to look like at that point, were we? No, it's just, again, the weather causing issues that you're having to bring events in, you're having to potentially cancel events. Yeah. Very frustrating as an athlete, but they all understood the situation. They did. So it was then communicated I guess overnight into the next day that they were taking an event out and I think everyone was sad that it was the Apollon's axle that ended up I getting was the chop. Absolutely <laughs> gutted that We've the axle was out so long. because I've been I've been kind of championing championing them to use the axle. I, yeah. I've really wanted to, ever since Adrunus used to dominate the axle at the Arnold Classic. I've wanted to see it in a competition, and I've been nagging the Arnold promoters and Rogue. And eventually, I was like, "Yes, we're going to see what the guys it's can do right now." <laughs> I was absolutely gutted, just from a fan's point of view, that they took the axle out. Yeah, and they just went with the log for reps. Yeah, so I'm guessing they didn't use the Fingles fingers because it was a space issue in the smaller in. Indoor. Wow, it wasn't even indoor. It was a covered area. It's like the Converse, I think they call it, isn't yeah. it? Um, that they couldn't physically, safely fit it all in. So it ended up being, like you say, log for reps. The biggest problem there being that the athletes were training for three very fast reps on this one log. Well, it was about speed. So yes, essentially yeah. you're supposed to do two flips of the finger into three reps of the log as quick as possible. Just like they did on the yoke in the previous few years where they did the yoke into the three reps on the log. Mm. Kiryu won it in 2021. Mitch Hooper won that event last year. Yeah. Incredible time. So those athletes have all been training for speed. Suddenly they're thrown into doing the log for reps. Now, the thing is, the log for reps is a bread and butter event in Strongman. So I is. think in terms of a change... The organisers were thinking it's something they all do. Yeah. It's, and me as a fan, yeah. devastated they took the axle out. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. and I'm, you know, guys like Bobby Thompson are going to be annoyed that they took the axle out. I'm yeah. sure many of the athletes were because they've been training hard yeah, for that event. Course, yeah. And if you take out an event that you're strong at in a six event competition, it's going to cost you points. And that's somewhere you've been yourself, isn't it? Well, most athletes uh, yeah, have. Of course, you know, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's frustrating, um, but you kind of have to cope. Now, this event turned out to be one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in terms of Tom Stoltman hitting 10 reps on this. Yeah. 162 kilos, 360 pounds. He did 10 reps, 10 perfect reps. 10 beautiful reps. Like, there was two performances this weekend that blew my mind. One was, was the log from Tom. Yeah. One was what we'll talk about in a second, yeah. the um, Roger Coaster by Kiddushkovsky. Yeah. But those two individual performances were absolutely incredible. Now, Mitch Hooper came second. Again, I've seen a lot of controversy and people saying, oh, Mitch shouldn't have been given his reps, blah, blah, blah. Mitch does exactly what he, the referees expect of him. He is trying to make sure his logs, re his reps are locked out and he waits for the down signal from the referee. If the referee gives you a quick down signal, as an athlete, you're gonna put it down. We have the rules as well and the rules state the log must be overhead, yep. your feet must be planted and somewhat parallel and your elbows locked. That is the rules for a good it is. And, and rep, isn't You it? know, when it's reps, you'll see a lot of athletes given reps, maybe quicker than we expect it's them to be. It's a quick down I didn't see anything terrible at all. I mean, you know, I've seen, I've worse. seen a lot worse. I've seen I'm worse. not talking about Mitch, I'm talking for everyone because yeah. there was complaints about a number of the athletes' reps. I didn't see anything too bad at all. Uh, 
I have seen way, way worse. Now remember, from a referee's point of view, four reps, they are one referee head on with an athlete. It's not like a powerlifting comp where you've got three referees yeah. at either side. Maybe that's a conversation that needs to be had. I particularly think it's important for world records. Yes. But for an event for reps, as long as you are locked out and the referee gives you the down signal, what more do we expect the athletes to do? Oh no, it's, it's never on the athlete anyway, it's always on the referee, but like you say, you can't even really have, when it's for speed, these guys are banging these reps out, you can't be waiting for, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. then And at 160 at this level, it's kind of light, so they're trying to get through the reps as quick yeah. as possible whilst maintaining that energy level. Um, one thing again a lot of people have complained about was Mitch loading the last log onto his lap with the time running out. The rule stated that if you lifted the log before the time has run out, then you are allowed to finish, finish your attempt. Minutes. Yeah. He is a smart guy, he read the rules, he did what he was allowed, and the ref he went to the referee beforehand to question whether that was still the rule. Yeah. Carl Gillingham, who was the head referee, Yes, that's the rule. And there was a bit of confusion then as to whether he got the ninth rep or not. Well, I think the confusion came, because I thought you explained it quite well on commentary. I think the confusion, maybe he was only credited eight on the graphics, because um, pe like people around me didn't know. And they were yeah. like, oh, why did he finish that rep? And I, and I explained the rule to yeah, them. Yeah. And they were like, oh, oh, OK. Um, but I haven't actually watched that bit back. So uh, it, it just it was, again, a bit confusing. I think yeah. that is just the communication between the production team and the strongman team yeah um one thing i will say is apparently this rule comes from weightlifting mm. now in weightlifting you've got 60 seconds to start your lift but as long as you start it you can complete the lift okay in weightlifting it's a very explosive movement you cannot in weightlifting just take the bar off the ground and then rest it Wait. on your legs <laughs> yeah. it's literally you've got to pull and you go for the lift yeah so in terms of i think making things simpler in the future i don't think is a rule we need i think once the time is done the time is done however that was the rules. I'm just trying to explain it so people watching understand. And Kiliushkovsky was also in a very similar position. So he had the log, I think, in his lap when the whistle yeah. went, but he didn't get the rep. I'm wondering... And watching Kiliushkovsky back, you kind of thought, well, he's going a little bit slow. But talking yeah. to him afterwards, he trained for three fast yeah. and he wasn't sure he had the kind of conditioning to do multiple reps. So I think the fact that he kind of put in seven here will give him confidence that he can kind of build on that yeah because he didn't have a great um log result at the arnold's this year i know he was very disappointed there yeah anyway just quickly going through the results tom stockman taking the win 10 reps that is the only person i've ever seen do 10 with this type of weight is zadrinus one of the most impressive log lifts i've ever seen mitch hooper doing what he does getting the ninth rep for the big points luke stockman Thomas Evans, Bobby Thompson, all hitting eight reps. That is how high a standard this log was. That's crazy. Let's talk about Thomas Evans, man, because I love this guy. Like, the only competitions he's done recently, he's done the big four this year. He's and done some big comps. He's pretty much always up against the very top guys yeah. as well. And, and constantly improving. Yeah, and he really holds his own. I do like Thomas, and I really hope we see him at more big shows next yeah. year. So moving on to the Rogue Coaster, actually we've gone, you know, we've gone ahead of ourselves with the log. The Rogue Coaster was the first event of day yeah. two. We just with the, the change of the weather, we kind of jumping ahead of ourselves yes. again, is it? Sorry. The Rogue Coaster is visually just a cool looking event. It's essentially an arm over arm. You've got to pull these sandbags up this awesome looking ramp. Uh, the sandbags get dumped out at the top. But it's an arm over arm event, and this was all about Kilishkovsky. He is just incredible at any type of pulling um, other than a deadlift. <laughs> He's wow. great. Yeah. Like arm over arm, truck pulls, all yeah. those type of events. And he put in the fastest time we've ever seen with 29 seconds on this particular implement. Very, very impressive. Really getting himself back into the competition as well. It's so good to see him in some decent form again. Yeah. And he, he was the star of the show when it came to this event. Yeah. And the only thing that was different, because there was talk about putting in an extra bag, but they kept the weight the same. They changed the rope, though, didn't they? They the rope did. Had, like, last year, yeah. So last year the rope was quite stretchy. Yeah. So they changed the rope so it was a bit stiffer this year. And I think that was a good call. Yeah. Um, but yeah, essentially arm over arm event. Kiliskovsky dominated. Tom Stoltman was very, very solid very on this good, one. Yeah. Again, you look at Tom, you know he's built for this type of event. Mm -hmm. I think he was the fastest out of any guy that had never used the implement before. Yeah, and I think I 
think his time was a fraction faster than Martins last year, who won the event. Yeah, Martins won it last year, so yeah. you know, really good stuff from Tom. So I'll just go through the um, top five. Mateusz Kieliszkowski, 27.95. Tom Stockman in 33.08. Evan Singleton, 35.40. Mitch Hooper, 38.18. That was his worst result of the competition. And Alexei Novikov in fifth place, 40.37. I want to give a shout out to Bobby Thompson because although he placed eighth, he improved by over 20 seconds on his time from last year. So all you can do as an athlete is look at improving. And I'm proud of him as his coach for, for the huge improvement he made there. Finally, the jewel. Now, it was supposed to be a round-robin type thing with five, five people going in the first heat, five people going in the second heat, the top five from that then going again, and then the top two from that going into the final. Due to the weather and limited time, they decided to scrap that, which I was kind of happy about because I kind of was a bit confused by it all in terms of... <laughs> How to commentate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was just a standard five versus five fastest times, you know, like in Strongman Rules, fastest time, 10 points. The slowest time, one point. Now, we were watching the CrossFit who did a similar event before this and their sandbags were quite close. And we were thinking, surely the strongman bags are going to be further away than that. Can I jump in on, here? Jump because in. I was with Mitchell Hooper's family at this point and the, we were watching the CrossFit mm -hmm. too on the floor. And um, they were like, oh, the bags won't be there for the strongman. I was like, no, no, no. They'll be right there over the mm. frame, I imagine, about 20 metres away, and they'll have to carry it the whole way. So you can imagine my embarrassment when I was totally wrong, and the bags were set up the same. They were very close to the, what was it called? The Winkle thing? Uh, I can't remember what no, it was called. it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I've got to say, I did not like this event. I think it was... <sighs> It wasn't really a strong man event, first off. And I just well, think it was a bit underwhelming for the... Like, it's been very spectacular in previous years with the stone over the Inver post and... No, the Inver stone over the hitching post with the fireworks and yeah. all that. This felt lacklustre in comparison. It, it, it did. It, it was essentially kind of like an easy stone run for these yeah. guys because it was three sandbags. The, sand, the heaviest sandbag was 170 kilos, so that's pretty heavy, but it was extremely close to the platform. At this level with this caliber of athletes, you've got to make it hard for them yeah. and make it challenging and, and give us that drama that something could happen, an athlete could drain in terms of energy system, they could make a mistake or have more sandbags and, yeah. and make it like a real heavy stone run. Three, three sandbags... And first to last, well, first to eighth place, I think there was three seconds between them. Yeah, with the fastest being about 17 yeah. seconds. And a little it? bit of confusion in terms of when to go and when to finish. Originally, yeah. they were told to run across the finishing line. Then they were told they're not going to do that. So there was just a little bit of confusion. And this seems to be one of the, the kind of complaints, I guess, from this year's competition and things that can be improved on. Because like I said, the last two years at the Rogue have been unbelievable. Very professional, awesome events, yeah. awesome competition. And, you know, Rogue are an amazing company for Strongman. Not only are they putting on this Strongman competition that has the highest prize money, but they sponsor the Arnolds. They sponsor the Shaw Classic. They sponsor World's Strongest Man. Mm. They're an amazing company for Strongman. And we want them involved in Strongman. And I think that's the thing. I think we all hold Rogue to such a high standard, don't we? That um, Hence the quite overwhelmingly negative um, feedback from fans online. And I really, really hope it doesn't put Rogue off Strongman. I think it would be bad for everyone involved in the sport. I really hope they take... And I, I'm, I've been trying to think, like, what could be different? Because I understand why they do it the way that they do, incorporating it amongst the, the CrossFit competition, because then you're bringing new eyes well, to I've the got, sport. I've got a few ideas. Go and I'm on, sure, you know, I, I want you guys to share your constructive criticism you know i've seen some nasty comments online and nasty comments don't help they're anything. not helpful but if we can be constructive and come up with you know logical solutions. ideas and solutions that are going to help the sport move forward that will give people things to work off so i'm going to throw a few of mine out there go on then Lazo. firstly right the, the loading event was just it just didn't work yeah, yeah you know it was just not a good um, last event. we love a race don't we i, I do yeah we do I, like I, a race yeah, but we absolutely. like a longer race yeah <laughs> yeah just give it some drama give some yeah. you know when it's kind of a few seconds between everyone and yeah. it's like literally you're kind of forced to just get out there as quick as possible um it, it, it's very difficult to see much change in mm. that kind of time so in the CrossFit, they did a deadlift for Max, and I've seen them do a log for Max in the past. If you are going to incorporate Strongman with the CrossFit stuff, how about 
an event such as the deadlift for max for the crossfitters once they get to their top number you add an extra hundred pounds and you put in the strong and then you put the strong men to do reps with it that's a yeah, yeah. That's just something what like that. What a way to mock the crossfit. Yeah. They're how well, rude. <laughs> I, think, I think, to be honest, you might even have to add 200 pounds. But what it does, it shows how impressive the strong men are. And also, in terms of Rogue, it allows them to sell more bars because I don't think they're selling too many um, towers of power. No, um, no, probably not. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I love the visual, but I think if you're going to do like an event like the sandbag loading, let's make it more, you know, compare how much stronger the strong men are because we yeah. know the crossfitters are way fitter and you know incredible athletes yeah. i don't want to kind of take anything away from the crossfit athletes no, no. but, but we've got to see why the strong men are so impressive at yeah. what they do when you make us use a 50 pound bag or even a 100 pound heavier bag but just for the same distance mm. it's not so impressive but if you see you know all these crossfitters falling at 600 pounds yeah and then you put i don't know 750 800 pounds on the bar yeah. same bar and the strong men come out and rep it yeah it's going to be cool the people in the crowd are going to watch and think damn that's impressive the other thing i suggested is for the um the bull the, the kind of bull pull it's chuck that onto the roger coaster so it's going to go up the roger coaster the athlete is going to have a ladder attached to the floor so rather than doing the arm over arm they're going to do like an old-fashioned if you've ever seen a train pull pulling on a ladder you get rid of the, the worry about the friction and the, um, the kind of foot positioning. To be clear, they're not going up the road. No, no, no. So they're, they're the athletes the are kind of way. pushing, pulling the other way. Yeah, yeah. And the, the bull is going up the roller coaster yeah. to the top. When it gets to the top, smoke comes out of the nose, all kind of drama goes on. Yes. I think fireworks out of the head. Also, you get rid of the friction issue. So you've got the, the wheels on the, um, on the coaster, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You could load it up to the right kind of weight, get the right type of people, Brian Shaw, whoever, to test it. And then you can just kind of make it heavy. You don't have that issue of humidity causing problems or the kind of track kind of moving or anything like yeah. that. And I just think it would look visually cool seeing this ball getting higher and higher. Yeah. The athletes pulling up and then some kind of like dramatic explosion or something at the top. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But I try to think grand and, and, and big and I think no. it would be a cool way like to do it. That would be cool. Let us, let us know your <laughs> comments, your ideas, what you thought of the Rogue Invitational. Let's remember how much Rogue do for Strongman. They sponsor World's Strongest Man. They sponsor the Shaw Classic. They, they sponsor the Arnolds. Those are the three biggest competitions other than the Rogue Invitational. The Rogue Invitational has the biggest prize money in Strongman. It was $146,000 for the winner of the Strongman competition. Bear in mind, when I was competing at World's Strongest Man, first place was $40,000. It has improved now, but not to that level. So we need them in the sport. I want them involved in the sport. I hope they continue to keep do, putting on fantastic shows and continue to support Strongman. Very, very quickly, before we go, I will wrap up the final scores. So Mitch Hooper taking his third biggest win of the year. He's now the Arnold Strongest Man, the World's Strongest Man, and the Rogue Invitational Champion. What a year he has had. Tom Stockman finishing this year unbelievably well. He's looking in great form. Those two are going to have some battles next year. Oh, yeah. And to think we've got Lissis and Thor coming back to My Strongman goodness. as well. <laughs> it's going to be exciting with some huge battles between those athletes. Kiliuskowski took third place. He is looking like he's getting back into some decent form. And I wanted to talk about him because we spoke to him the following day and he was he was happy and it was so nice to see. He was like, do you know what? I had the worst journey getting here yeah. and he really did. It took him like 48 hours because of visas and all sorts yeah. for his poor wife. Um, but he was he was happy and it's great to see that confidence in him. Because And one thing with Kieliszkowski, he said he wants to compete. He's yes. had a little bit of a time where he's almost scared to compete. He said he wants to compete in different yeah. shows. So I think next year we're going to see a lot more of Kiliuskowski. Evan Singleton, his year has been so impressive, taking fourth place here at the Rogue Invitational. He's won multiple Giants Live, top five at World's Strongest Man. What a year it's been for Evan Singleton. Bobby Thompson, I'm super proud of Bobby taking fifth place. He's improving every year. His fitness is getting better. Um, truck pull and arm over arm were weak events. We knew they'd be, and they took his best event out, which is the Axel. So super proud of Bobby. Maxime Boudreaux showing some good form. Thomas Evans, as you said, continuing to get better. Luke Stoltman in eighth place. Alexei Novikov in ninth. Not where we expect to see Alexei, but no. as I said, he is focused on getting himself back to his best for next year. And sadly, Trey Mitchell with the injury. Trey is an amazing athlete. We wish him the best. He will be back. We've got some exciting battles ahead in Strongman. Let's get these events bigger better more professional let's improve them suggest the positive suggestions and we hope you enjoyed the video guys we'll catch you next time
Stay strong.